and we're not being properly taught in our schools. So, so uh, I'm going to uh, steal something from Al Gore, and I'm going to quote, I'm going to state inconvenient truth number two. So he doesn't have a monopoly in inconvenient truths. Here's another inconvenient truth. Increasingly, U.S. public school teachers of math and science don't know math and science. That's a, that's, that's a truth. And it's terrifically inconvenient. So, so why not? Why don't they know math and science? Well, I'll tell you why not. The starting compensation for a fully qualified New York City math teacher with a master's degree is $48,000 a year. Now, the starting compensation for a young programmer that comes into our company, a young program with the same kind of educational background, supposedly, is, uh, is about $100,000 a year. And it's even more if they speak English, which, which isn't so often. Now, on the other hand, in New York City, after 10 years, that same person could aspire to receive $68,000 a year. Now, in Renaissance, after 10 years, the, the sky's the limit. And even more if you speak English. So, well, w what changed? Well, h how come? Well, in the old days, obviously, there were far fewer of these type of opportunities outside the classroom. There just weren't so many businesses that depended on math and science. So it was easier to uh, get some pretty good teachers in there. And also, there were a lot of women who were good at math uh, who wanted to work, and there weren't many jobs available. They couldn't be engineers. They weren't allowed to be engineers or things like that. So they were tracked and became math teachers too. Now today, uh, it's a different story. There's tons, of, there's tons of good jobs for people who know math and science. They pay big salaries. They pay bonuses. They give you stock options. Maybe they even backdated them uh, if, you were, if you were especially lucky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's, a, there's a world of opportunity outside teaching in the classroom that's open to people who know math and science. And as for the women, well, as you can see by looking around you, today women can do uh, whatever they want, and they certainly do. So uh, that particular track is no, longer, uh, is no longer available. So what has happened is that the tradition, and we have a tradition in this country, uh, of flat salaries across subjects has basically thwarted the law of supply and demand. Because we pay history teachers and English teachers and gym teachers and math teachers and physics teachers all the same. But there isn't such a big demand for English teachers, for people who know English. I mean, we should all know English. But there's a huge demand for people who know, know math and who know science. But that's not reflected in their relative salaries. Well, some people think, amazingly, some people think that knowledge of the subject doesn't really matter. After all, uh, if you, pay, you get the pedagogy right and you get the curriculum right, well, uh, then, uh, uh, then anyone can teach that. Well, common sense tells you that's not. It doesn't matter how good the curriculum is. If you don't know what you're talking about, it's not very, it's not very helpful. Uh, it's instructive to recall, to any of you who could recall, but anyway, I will, I will report how uh, we trained pilots in the Second World War. Second World War started, we only had a few military pilots, we needed a lot of them, right? We needed to teach these kids to fly airplanes. So uh, we started training, I mean, the Air Force started training people to fly planes. And uh, they'd go through a class and they'd uh, send them off to, uh, you know, to fight after they were trained, except they held back the best ones. Now you might think, well, gee, the best ones, well, we sent them over there to shoot, the, shoot down the Messerschmitts or whatever, but no. The best ones are kept to teach the next crop. They didn't like it. They wanted to go and show how wonderful they were. But nonetheless, they were kept because it was reckoned that the best pilots would make the best teachers of pilots. Now, obviously, there must have been some exceptions to that. But by and large, that was their rule. After a while, those boys did get sent out, and uh, new people came in. Even more extraordinary, that if you happen to become an ace, well, you shot down five planes or whatever it took to become an ace. You were brought back from the field, stuck back in the classroom, and told to teach. Because those guys who were aces were tremendously inspiring teachers, obviously. So 
The Air Force wanted the people who knew the most about flying to teach flying, not the people who knew the least. So, so how do we how do we uh, how do we solve this problem? It really is a problem. So what what do we do? Well, there's there's uh, one approach is volunteerism, and that is a partial solution, but it's not a complete solution. So you give people scholarships, you exhort them, you appeal to their youthful idealism. Uh, what do you call it? Teach for America. There are other uh, various things. Give them. A, do something to get people to feel that this is a way that they can contribute to their country, to teach, often in underprivileged schools, but not always. And that's pretty good, because some people come in, but they stay a few years, and then they go get a real job. Because the job is simply not attractive enough to hold the kind of people who, on the whole, you want to stay in that job. So you can get them in, but they're just not going to stay, at least they're not going to make a career out of it. So, you know, it works okay in the Army. In fact, it works great to have recruits. They come in, they work for a few years, they get up to corporal or I don't know what, and they go out and a new crowd comes in. But you don't want to continually be turning over the colonels. I mean, you have to have an officer corps. You have to have a corps of officers and non-commissioned officers who are trained professionals who stay. And those folks can then deal with the turnover. So you cannot make, you cannot solve this problem with, uh, with just bringing in young people, having them teach for a couple of years, and, and, then, uh, and then go off to, to Goldman Sachs. So the, the, the real solution to this problem is to make the job of math and science teaching sufficiently appealing to both attract and retain a cadre of outstanding professionals. That's what we have to do. To do that, how do we make the job better? Well, the obvious way you make a job better is to pay more, and yes, we have to pay more. Somehow or other, we have to pay these folks more. And the other thing we have to do is give them more respect. Create a situation where they get more respect. And you know what? It is not so hard to do both. And we've started such a program in New York. Uh, Governor Napolitano uh, mentioned it, called uh, Math for America. Of course, it's a, it's a program based on private money, but I'm going to describe it a little bit because it works. It's four years old. Uh, our director is here, Erwin Craw, wave your hand over there. He's over there somewhere. Anyway, the executive director is there. So this is the way the program works. There's two entry points. You could be a new college grad. Let's talk about that first. A new college grad. We take in 50 a year right now. The first thing any applicant does is given a test. He has to pass a test. It's a uniform test. It's created by the, uh, by the Educational Testing Service in Princeton. You don't pass the test, you can't come in. You pass the test, you then get to the next stage, you're interviewed. If you're interviewed and you look like you could be a teacher, and the test is, of course, a test of subject knowledge. It is not a test of anything having to do with pedagogy or any other damn thing. Do you know mathematics? By the way, this program is based only on mathematics, but nonetheless. Do you know the subject? Can you calculate the cosine of an angle? Do you even know what it means? Whatever the, whatever the questions might be. But it's knowledge of subject. So you pass that test, you, you uh, pass the, uh, the interview process, you look like you'd make a good teacher, and you're in. Not having had, because these people typically